Concord Baptist Church Bible study this Friday night. Uh, been rainy and cloudy here in the last few days. But uh, anyway, I've got a couple prayer requests tonight. Uh, Brother Steve Whitlock, he's having knee replacement on the 29th, and he has to stay off all of his arthritic medicines, pain medicines, and everything, which he's been on for years since he's been disabled. And uh, he's in pain. I called him to check on him today, and he said he had a rough night, didn't he? didn't go in to do anything and he said he uh said he prayed and asked god to have mercy and even though he didn't deserve it and and he said during the night god did something so ease the pain since he can't take anything for it so i ask you if, if you would to definitely pray for him amen and the other prayer request is Miss Linda, my wife. She's got an intestine infection, uh, infection and colitis. Uh, she's in real bad shape. Uh, bring brings her to tears with the pain. It's so excruciating, and of course the things that go with that vom vomiting and dysentery. And she's been up and day and night for the last couple of days went to the hospital of the day or to urgent care and anyway they gave her some kind of antibiotic sent her home and she can't keep that down so if you would really pray for her amen and we sure would appreciate it and i think sister Teresa is still having headaches and uh but that goes with marriage amen <laughs> uh, continue to pray for brother Roger Dorn that he get healing and hopefully get out of that place one day get back home and, and in the church amen and pray for our church we have other prayer requests also pray for brother Tommy and uh, he went to the doctor today and they're trying to see what's wrong with him, but I don't understand that. Uh, he should have went to a psychiatrist, amen. <laughs> but anyway, uh, pray for these folks. And of course, Rush Limbaugh and our president in Israel. And Walter. Uh, I think they said he had a rough day yesterday, but praying for his speedy recovery. So let's pray. Grace Heavenly Father, we do thank you for this evening, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to be here. Um, Lord, we pray that you'd be with all the sick folk. And Lord, uh, you know what it's like in the home without the wife functioning. And Lord, uh, no one to yell at me and tell me what to do and how to do it. And Lord, we miss that. And uh, I just pray that you would would help her and lift her up, Lord, from that bed of affliction. I don't know what we'd do without her. I was walking through the house this evening and thinking if something happened to her, I'd be totally lost. So I ask you for her sake and my sake that you'd touch her and heal her and lift her up. I pray for Brother Raj, Brother Tommy, Sister Teresa, Brother Steve, uh, Lord uh, Rush Limbaugh and, and uh, President Trump and Billy Coates and the others, and Walter. And so, Lord, we just ask you for your help. Uh, we can do nothing. The doctors really can't do anything. We need a touch from the great physician, and that's you. Lord, we know we're undeserving, but we look for your mercy. You said, let us come boldly unto thy throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. And, uh, Lord, it's time of need, and we ask you that you would give the grace and lord we thank you for the mercy that you so willingly shed upon us that we don't deserve and lord be with us tonight as we study thy word for it's in the precious name of the lord jesus christ we pray and ask these things amen all right oh they wouldn't take you huh <laughs> okay 
All right. Uh, let's see what our engineer has for us to listen to tonight. Sounds like a dragon tape. Jesus passed by.
lay aside the garments that are stained with sin and be washed in the blood of the Lamb. There's a fountain flowing for the soul unclean. Oh, be washed in the blood of the Lamb. Are you washed in the blood, in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb? Yes, I am. Are your garments by the White as snow, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Amen. Thank you, girls. Yes, sir. All right. <clears throat> Again, please pray for Sister Linda. She's in excruciating pain. And uh, I woke up hearing her go into the restroom and a couple times during the night and I laid awake there and all of a sudden my stomach started hurting and I got nauseated and I think I was having sympathy pains for me Ben but uh anyway needless to say not much rest last night so please keep her in prayer and hope that she can get this medicine down that they gave her amen all right well tonight I want to look at something. I don't know who tuned in last night at church um, with the young folks there and all. And we had a good time. But I asked them a question. I was surprised that only one or two people, and that was members of the church that could raise their hand, that knew anything about being a priest and having a priesthood. And uh, even today, uh, one that works with us, Timothy, he said, I thought priests were Old Testament. And they were, that where they were, under the Levitical priesthood, you had the Old Testament priest that administered uh, about things about the tabernacle and the temple and the sacrifices and everything that had to be taken care of in the worship of the Lord. But in the New Testament, uh, we're also been made priests. And, you know, we know that we're sons. And as a son, we go to pray and we go, the first thing we do is we go to 1 John 1, 9. It says, if we confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And... And then uh, we'll go to 1 John in chapter 2 in verse 6. And it says, He that saith he abideth in him ought himself also to walk even as he walked. In 1 John chapter 3 in verse 1 it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. And then Galatians 2.20, uh, the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, let me turn over here to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. And... Uh, Verse 4, it says, Who gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from the pre this present evil world according to the will of God, and, look at this, our Father. So we're sons of God. Amen. When you get born again, you become a son of God. And then you're also made a soldier. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 and 5, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalt itself, amen, against uh, the will of God. I'm sorry I drew a blank there. Uh, but it says that we're soldiers. But the Bible does say that our adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may devour. So as a son, 
we ought to want to please the Father. As a soldier were to fight against wickedness and evil, and in Ephesians chapter 6, beginning in verse 10, he says, this is the warrior's power. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then we have an armor, the warrior's armor. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. And as we've said before, that's not just Washington, D.C., amen, uh, even though there is a lot there. But he's speaking about in the atmosphere, in the air. He says, Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Well, he said, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth. What is truth? The Bible's truth. The Lord's truth. Amen. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, that means just doing what's right, even when you don't feel like it. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. These are things that we are commanded to do. And Paul says, and for me, that utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make known the mystery of the gospel. Now look what he says in verse 21, Ephesians 6, 21. For which I am an ambassador in bonds, that therein I may speak boldly as I ought to speak. So not only are we the sons of God, but we are soldiers of God. Over in the Gospels, he said, occupy till I come. That's a military term. He says, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. In other words, we can't fight them with our hands and our fists. Amen. The weapons of our warfare are spiritual. Uh, we pray. We seek the Lord's will. But here's the thing that surprised me is that most people don't realize that we have a priesthood. I was taught that when I went to church at Gethsemane. And I always loved the priesthood. And people don't realize that that is a great blessing to be part of a priesthood. Well, what priesthood are we part of? Well, it's called the Melchizedek priesthood. Amen. I want to uh, take you back here to 1 Peter chapter 2. And in verse 9, Peter says, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him which hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Then in over in Revelation, Revelation in chapter one, he says, the revelation of Jesus Christ, verse one, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. John to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you. 
I'm sorry, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Now look at verse 6. And hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. It says he's made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. We're to operate in a priesthood. In last night's uh, lesson, we had the two charts. We've showed them to you before here, if you've been on, that we made up of the breastplate of the Levitical priesthood that had 12 stones. And on those 12 stones, there was the names of each tribe placed on them. And then we showed you another breastplate that we made from the Melchizedek priesthood and that priesthood had nine stones on it. So how do you know preacher? Well, we had gone over to Ezekiel chapter 28 last night and read about the anointed chair that covered who was Lucifer. And before he fell, it says he has been in Eden, the garden of God. And, uh, When he was in there, it said that every precious stone was his covering. And he named off nine of the same stones that are on the 12 of the breastplate of the Levitical priesthood. Now, the Bible says that Jesus was made a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. The first time we hear about Melchizedek, it's over in Genesis where Abraham was coming back from the slaughter of the kings and he tithed to Melchizedek the 10%. In 110 chapter of Psalm in verse 4, it says, the Lord has sworn and will not repent. Speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ here. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. A lot of preachers today and scholars say that Melchizedek is uh, Jesus with another name. That's not true. Melchizedek is the Holy Ghost. And he's God's eternal high priest. Now, we've been made priest because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did. We've been made priest after that same order, the order of Melchizedek. Over in the book of Hebrews, now I'm going to turn there, the book of Hebrews, and we'll look at chapter 5 in the book of Hebrews if you have your Bibles. I know I, I told the young folks last night and the people that were listening that the, dev, the devil hates this doctrine of the priesthood. He fell from that priesthood. We read over in Ezekiel 28 that he had sanctuaries. Amen. And uh, he was religious. A lot of people that are lost today are religious. They have a form of godliness, but they deny the power thereof. The Bible says from such turn away. Now, in Hebrews in chapter 5, it says, For every high priest taken from among men is ordained for men and things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. Who can have compassion on the ignorant and on them that are out of the way? For that he himself also is compassed with infirmities, talking about the Old Testament Levitical priest, amen? And by reason hereof he ought, as for the people, so also for himself, to offer for sins. 
And no man taketh this honor unto himself, but he that is called of God, as was Aaron. So also Christ glorified not himself to be made an high priest, but he that said unto him, Thou art my son. Today have I begotten thee, as he saith also in another place. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Well, what is that? Where was that other place? I just read it to you in Psalm 110 in verse 4. Now, it says, who in the days of his flesh, it's talking about the Lord Jesus, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Called of God, and high priest after the order of Melchizedek. Then in verse 11, it says, of whom we have many things to say. Now, who is he referring to there in verse 11 when he says of whom we have many things to say? It refers back to Melchizedek. And he says, seeing ye are dull of, or, and hard to be uttered. He says, these things are hard to be uttered seeing you're dull of hearing. For when, for the time, you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age, even those who by reason of us have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Now, if Jesus was made a priest after the order of Melchizedek, he would not be made a priest after anyone less than God. Amen. Now, when we find him, let's see if, Let's go back to Genesis. I believe it's uh, chapter 14. I didn't write, it, <clears throat> write any notes down tonight. So let's go back to Genesis in chapter 14. If I'm wrong, we'll move up till we find it. But I'm pretty sure. Okay, that's it. Now, it says in verse 1, chapter 14 of Genesis, And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Eleazar, Chedidolomer, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations, that these made war with Bera, king of Sodom, and with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shinab, king of Adma, and Shemabar, king of Zeboam, and the king of Bele, which is Zoar. All these were joined together in the vale of Siddim, which is the Salt Sea. Twelve years they served Chedidolomar. In the thirteenth, thirteenth year they rebelled. In the fourteenth year came Chedorlaomer and the kings that were with him and smote the Rephaims and Ashtaroth, Carnaim, and Zuzims in Ham, and the Emons in Sheve, Kerjathim, and the Horites in their mount Seir unto El Paran, which is by the wilderness. And they returned and came to En Mishfat, which is Kadesh, and smote all the country of the, the Malchites, also the Amorites and, uh, that dwelt in Hazianzon, Tamar. And there went out the king of Sodom and the king of Gomorrah and the king of Adam and the king of Zerim and the Beli and the same as Zozar, and they joined battle with them in the vale of Sidim, with Chedemar, the king of Elam, and with Tidal. And it says, and they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah and all their victuals and went their way. 
And it says, and they took Lot, Abram's brother's son, who dwelt in Sodom and his goods and departed. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram, the Hebrew, for he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother of Eshcol, the brother of Aner, and these were confederate with Abram. When Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318, and pursued them unto Dan. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants, by night, and smote them, and pursued them unto Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods, and also brought again his brother Lot, and his goods, and the women also, and the people. And the king of Sodom sent out to meet him after his return from the slaughter of Chelalaremar, and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Sheba, which is the king's dell. Now, first mentioned in the Old Testament, and Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. What's that a picture of? The Lord's table, amen? And he was the priest of the most high God. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the most high God, possessor of heaven and earth. Blessed be the most high God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithes of all. And the king of Sodom and said unto Abram, Give me the persons and take the goods to thyself. And Abram said to the king of Sodom, I have lift up mine hand unto the Lord, the most high God and possessor of heaven and earth, that I will not take from a thread even to a shoe latchet, that I will not take anything that is thine, lest thou shouldest say I have made Abram rich, save only that which the young men have eaten, and the portion of the men which went with me, Aner, Esco, Mamre, let them take their portion. So the first mention we have of Melchizedek there is in chapter 14, when he came forth to meet Abram, and he brought bread and wine, and Abram gave unto him tithes. Amen. That's why the Bible says that uh, they that received tithes, the priest in the Levitical priesthood paid tithes in Abram while they were still while he was still in his loins. Amen. So some people will tell you that uh, Melchizedek had no beginning of days nor end of life, and what they're saying is he had no pedigree. He had no birth certificate. He didn't need a birth certificate. He's always been because he's God. Amen. He's God, and he and he doesn't have a pedigree because he's not a dog, amen? He is God, God the Holy Ghost. There are three that bear a record in heaven, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, amen? And so it says that he is the most priest of the Most High God. Now, we're at a time tonight, but there's a lot more to this, and Lord willing, if I... Uh, don't forget, I'll try to pick up on it Monday and we'll go further into this Melchizedek. And we'll also, uh, if we've been made priest forever after the order of Melchizedek through the Lord Jesus Christ because of his shed blood, then there must be spiritual sacrifices that you and I as Christians should have to offer up. And there is. There's the body. There's seven of them. The sacrifice of the body, sacrifice of faith, the sacrifice of offerings and sacrifice of praise, sacrifice of thanksgiving, sacrifice of righteousness, and the sacrifice of joy. We've got verses for those and we'll go over them. But I want to expound a little bit more about Melchizedek. You see, the priest in the Old Testament wore, the, wore a gown, a garment, and on the bottom of that the hem of that garment, there was a bell and a pomegranate, a bell and a pomegranate, all the way around the hem of that garment. And when he went in to the most holy place to minister to the things of God, those bells would tingle. And if they quit and he did something wrong, then he died. So when they didn't hear the bells, they knew there was something wrong. Now, Josephus, 
in the history of the Jews, the antiquity of the Jews, said that there was a rope tied around his ankle so that when he went in, if the bells quit and he died, they could drag him out because nobody was allowed into the most holy place. But I contend that that couldn't be because he had to be dressed just right and dressed perfect. Amen. Uh, he couldn't even sweat. He had to wear the priestly garments. So I don't know how they got him out of there unless the Lord just sent him out, amen, which he could do or whatever. I'm, I'm not sure. I have to look into that more. But the fact is everything had to be just right. And the day that the earth darkened when the Lord Jesus Christ was crucified, and he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Well, in the Old Testament tabernacle, the Ark of the Covenant was a picture of Christ. And every time the priest came in, you could hear those bells. He knew what he was coming to do. He was coming to offer up blood for the atonement of the people of Israel and himself. I believe that when the world couldn't see it because it was in a spiritual thing that the Lord on the cross heard the bells tingling as Melchizedek, God's high priest was coming to receive the blood to offer it up to God. And he cried out, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Amen. That's all we have time for tonight. We actually went way over, but uh, we'll pick back up on that in the future, hopefully Monday. And uh, we'll look into more about Melchizedek and why I believe he's the Holy Ghost. And I believe I have scripture to prove it. And so bring your pencils and papers and your Bibles. Amen. Amen. God bless you and have a good evening. Father, we do thank you for tonight. We thank you for the folks that are tuned in. And Lord, we pray for those that are sick. And I pray especially for my wife, Lord, that you touch her. We thank you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and ask these things.